Hello friends. Welcome back to csup.net online training video series. Today we are going to discuss one of the important concepts called finally block in CSA. Please watch our previous two videos before proceeding with this video. In our previous two videos, what we discussed, we discussed exception handling in C -Sharp, as well as how to implement multiple catch block in C -Sharp with examples, right? What we are going to discuss today, today we are going to discuss what is exactly finally block in C -Sharp, why do we need the finally block in real time project and in how many ways we can use try catch and finally block in C -Sharp application. These three things we are going to discuss today. So let's start today's discussion. What is finally block? The keyword finally establish a block that definitely executes the statement placed in it, irrespective of whether any exception occurred or not in the try block. That means the statement that are placed inside the final block guaranteed to be executed, irrespective of whether any exception is thrown or not in the try block, irrespective of whether the exception is handled by the catch block or not. So what it means? It means if you want to execute some statement, right, irrespective of the uh, irrespective of whether any exception occurred in the try block or whether that exception is handled by the cache block or not. But if you want to execute some statement, then those statement needs to be placed inside the final block. In how many ways we can use try catch final means in two ways. See, you can see in this case, try block is there. We have multiple catch block. But after the catch block, I have written the final block. And the other syntax is that I have the try block. And after try block, I have written the final block. So what is the difference between these two syntaxes? The difference is that in this case, if any exception occurred in the try block, right, then that exception might be handled by the catch block. If the catch block, if, if some kind of exception occurred, if that exception is handled by the catch block, that is well and fine. If not handled, then also the final block is going to be executed. If the exception occurred, catch block handle, final block will execute. Exception occurred, catch block not handled that exception, final block is going to be executed. There is no exception in the try block. Even though if there is no exception, then catch block will not come into the picture, but final block is going to be executed. So in this scenario, if some exception occurred, then if you handle that exception, then there is no abnormal termination of your program, right? If you are not handling the exception, then abnormal termination is there in your program. Even though the abnormal termination is there, the code that you have written in the final block is guaranteed to be executed, right? So in this uh, try catch finally implementation, uh, so basically the way we have written, right, catch uh, block and we have also written the generic catch block means in this case if some exception occurred then guaranteed that exception is going to be handled by the catch block and after handling the catch block right after handling the exception the finally block or whatever statement we have written inside the finally block those are going to be executed and coming to the other syntaxes here uh, we are writing the try block but we do not have any catch block that is also fine so finally block will check whether the corresponding is a try block or catch block if it's a try block or it's a catch block, then you can use the final block. So in this case, what will happen? Now, if some exception occurred, uh, then the program will be terminated abnormally, but the final block code is going to be executed. If no exception occurred, then that is fine. Even though no exception occurred, the statement what you have written inside the final block, that is going to be executed, right? So the point that you need to remember is, if anything that you want to be executed irrespective of whether any exception occurred or not, whether that exception is handled by the cache block or not, but you want to execute the code, then you have to put those code inside the final block. With this, keep in mind, let us proceed and see the things, right? So now, now you have to one question, sir. Uh, I can handle the try block, I can write the catch block, you know, what is the need of a final block? We are saying we need to write the code which we need to be executed irrespective of the execution. Then what type of a code we need to write inside the final block that you need to remember? See, as per the industry standard, within the, fin uh, within the final block, we need to write the resource releasing logic. Resource re re releasing logic or cleanup code. Then what do we mean by resource releasing logic? Research releasing logic means on referencing object that are created in the try block, right? Suppose you created one object, right? Uh, you declare one object, you created one object, and after that you want to make that object null, right? So that object making null 
that code you need to write inside the final block, right? Since the statement written in the try and catch block are not guaranteed to be executed, see, if you write some code in this try block, if you write some code in the catch block, you cannot give guarantee that the code is going to be executed. But if you want to give guarantee, guarantee means finally come to the picture, right? So there is no guarantee that the code what you have written inside the try block or catch block is going to be executed. But if you want to give guarantee, then you need to put the code inside the final block. For example, if you want, so suppose, suppose you are working with the edio.net, right? You are connecting with the SQL Server database, right? Where, when we are working with the SQL Server or MySQL or Oracle database using edio.net, right? So in that time, we are going to create some uh, connection object, some command object, right? And once we use the connection object, once we use the command object, right? Then we need to close the connection, close the command by calling the close method on the connection object or on the command object, right? Then that calling method, right? That uh, close method calling statement, you have to write inside the final block. Why? Because if you write the close method, uh, clo if you are calling the close method uh, on the connection object or a command object in the try block, there is no guarantee that statement is going to be executed. If you put the statement inside the cache block, then also there is no guarantee the statement is going to be executed. Then you have another option. What is that option? You might be used, you might be write the statement in both the try and class block. Yes, so you can write that code in try block and you can write the code in cache block. Then also it is not guaranteed that the code is going to be executed. Why? Now suppose that code in the try block is not executed before the that code some exception occurred. You return the code in the cache block also. That uh, close call, that is close method call you have also written in the cache block. But is that cache block going to be executed? Is that cache block handling the exception which is thrown by the try block? No that cache block not handling the exception, then even though you have written the code inside the cache block, those code are not going to be executed. But if you write those code inside the final block, it doesn't matter whether the exception is thrown or not, whether that exception is handled by the cache block or not, but final block means the code is going to be executed. So those real, real resource releasing statement, right, you have to write inside the final block, right? Let us understand this with one example, right? So, okay, let me copy paste the code, right? So this is the same example uh, which we are working so far. So I'm creating two variable, right? Number one, number two, and result. I'm taking the in, uh, number one from the user, right? I'm asking a user to enter the second number. He's entering the second number, storing that number inside the number two variable. Then I'm doing the arithmetic division operation. And after the operation, I'm just printing the result. Here you can see I'm writing one catch block. And this cache block is going to be handled the division by uh, divide, divide by zero exception. I'm having another cache block, and this cache block is going to handle this format exception, right? And then I have the final block, and this final block is the code that you want to execute. Uh, hundred percent. You want to be guaranteed. If you want to execute some code, guaranteed, right? That means if you want to execute whether the exception occurred or not, whether the cache block handled that uh, exception or not, right? But if you want to execute some statement, then you have to put the statement inside the final block. And in the our example, I'm just uh, uh, putting one print line uh, statement, right? I'm just printing this statement so that you can get a better idea, right? Now I'm going to run the application and I am going to show you three different scenarios and every time you will see that the final block code is going to be executed. Okay, let me run the application and first time I will enter the correct data. Correct data means I'm entering 100 as the first number, I'm entering say 10 as the second number. In this case, output 10, but after output 10, you can see that statement what you written inside the final block is executed. In this case, uh, uh, the cache block is not going to be executed because the try block not throwing any exception. If the try block doesn't throw any exception, means the cache block are simply ignored. And the final block, but you can see the statement what you have written in the final block, right? Hello, uh, this is final block, that statement is going to be executed, right? So in this case, in this example, we do not have any kind of exception now. Now let me run another time, right? So in this time, I'm entering the second number as zero. So in this case, you will see that the catch block, which take divide by zero exception as a parameter, right? Divide by zero exception class as a parameter, that catch block handle the exception and the statement written inside that catch block executed. But after executing that catch block, the second catch block is simply skipped because at any given point of time, we have discussed only one catch block is going to handle the exception. 
So once the catch block handle the execution, then it will directly jump to the final block and the statement written inside the final block are executed. You can see, hello, this is final block. This statement is printed in the console, right? So this is the, the second scenario. Now, now again, I'm running the application and this time I'm entering a string value. So once I enter the string value, you can see the statement, the, uh, we'll get format exception, right? Because we are unable to convert this thing into integers, so format exception is there. And the cache block, which take format exception class as a parameter, that cache block executed. And executing after executing that cache block, the final block statement is executed. So what it means, it means if you are putting something in the final block, then those things, uh, those things are going to be executed guaranteed, right? Those are going to be executed irrespective of the exception occurred or not in the try block on if the exception is handled or not handled in the try block. So in how many ways we can use the try cache? We can use the try cache without finally, right? So in this case, if you comment the statement, that is also fine. Try cache, uh, you can also write like try cache finally, you can write, you can write a tie, you can write one cache block or a multiple cache block. No matter if you write one cache block, then that is also fine. Right, so in this way you can write try catch and finally try multiple catch and finally that is also accepted. And the last one is try and finally. So in this case you can see I'm writing try and the final that is also acceptable. So in this case what will happen now after throwing the exception, the program will be terminated abnormally. But before uh, terminate, but uh, but this statement what you have written that statement is going to be executed. To make you sure, see uh, this thing, I'm taking a different example, right? So different example means I will show you uh, once the exception occurred. If you are not handling the exception, then also the final block is going to be executed. So I'm creating a static sum method, right? Inside this sum method, I'm uh, printing one statement that is inside sum method, which tell that the we are uh, we are inside this method. Then I'm intentionally throwing here divided by zero exception. You can see I'm taking number one as 10, number two as zero, and doing the division operation. It means 10 divided by zero exception will be thrown here. As exception will be thrown here, you will see that this statement, what you have written in line number 13, is not going to be executed. But the statement, uh, uh, what you have written inside the final block is going to be executed. That means this statement will not be printed on the console, but this statement is going to be printed on the uh, console, right? Let me, uh, and after uh, this, I'm just calling this same some method from the try block and the catch block here I'm writing. So here you'll see exception code. But this statement is not going to be executed. But even though this statement is not going to be executed inside this method, so once the exception occurred, you will see that this final block is guaranteed to be executed. Let me run the application and see the output. Uh, so my application is running, right? So you can see the output. So here, uh, inside the inside the sum method, yes, we are inside the sum method, right? And we are executing the statement, but at line number 12, we will get some exception. Once we get the exception at line number 10, uh, 12, then you will see that whatever statement you have written in line number 13, that is not executed. Even though that statement is not executed, the final block, whatever statement you have written, some method in final block, some method final block, that statement is executed. And from here, we have written the try catch block and inside the catch block, whatever statement you have written, exception code, that is printed on the console. So these are the different ways you can use try catch. You can use try catch finally, right? Even though if you do not use catch work, you can also use try finally like this. So this is how you can use finally block in your application development, right? So once we proceed in our uh, in this video series, right? Once we discuss the advanced concept like file handling, right? Collection framework, uh, asynchronous programming. At a time, I will show you the real use of uh, finally block because at a time when working with heavy resources, right? Uh, external resources, then at a time it is mandatory to close the resources as soon as possible, right? So at a time, I will show you when we are working with ADO.net. At a time, I will also show you what is the use of finally block, right? That's it for today. In the next video, I'm going to discuss how to create custom exception classes in CSA, right? Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.